live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering ServiceNow Knowledge 2018. Brought to you by ServiceNow. Welcome back to theCUBE's live coverage of ServiceNow Knowledge 18. We are here in Las Vegas at the Venetian. I'm Rebecca Knight, your host, along with my co-host, Dave Vellante. We are joined by Thomas Squayo. He is the Senior Vice President for Digital Transformation and Enterprise Architecture at West Corp. Thanks so much for coming on the show. Good morning, thank you for having me. So digital transformation, you're the SVP. It's a, it's a buzzword of the technology industry and also at this conference. Tell us a little bit about what it, what it, how you describe it, what it means, and then also about West's journey. Sure, so uh, in my own role within, uh, when, within West, a digital transformation gives me an opportunity to have higher amounts of contact with the business side of the organization, whether it be customer success, product management, looking at our uh, strategic accounts team, and basically working across all aspects of the business. While I am in, uh, running enterprise architecture, I also run product engineering for the organization, and those, those combined roles give me the opportunity to take things from strategy to tactic inside the organization, but the digital transformation component gives me the context for what the organization needs to move towards. But essentially, you guys are a digital company, right? So We are. So, I mean, you're digital evolving, maybe, but so what does digital transformation mean to a company like yours that's born digital, if you will. Right, so, so we came out of a, a traditional telco background, so everything about our business was driven by software, and up until about 2015, it was very human capital intensive. Uh, so what we've done is we've kind of retooled ourselves to be a, a more forward-looking technology organization that's driven by software, delivering solutions on behalf of our customers, and that includes much more of a uh, a service and solution portfolio than it does in a human capital portfolio. So as you transition from a business to a digital business, what was the role of data? What, how did the data model evolve? Well, I think that one of the things that we look at in our data model is that um, because of the scope and scale of our business, uh, they have different, uh, data, different data model requirements for different aspects of our business. Our safety business operates under DHS critical infrastructure rules, whereas our uh, unified communications is uh, typically dictated by regulatory and compliance environments in healthcare, education, uh, you know, commercial and utility markets, and then other aspects, depending on what kind of notifications are going out, might be under HIPAA, high trust, and those kind of things. Those are really kind of the drivers for us to be able to prioritize how it affects our data model and our InfoSec profile. Yeah, so you have to have sort of semi-siloed data model, right? I correct, mean, correct. So we don't see a lot of customer movement across the organization, only about 30% of our customers buy from multiple West businesses, and they're typically very compartmentalized around the, the use and consumption model that we actually have been approached for. So as the digital leader, does that present challenges for you, or is it, it is what it is and you just sort it of It actually deal with it? presents more opportunities than anything else, and the reason why is because we could take learning from very forward-looking, leaning, cloud native platforms and be able to apply that into some of our legacy business. Or we could also look at something like the regulatory environment and how certain businesses actually satisfy that and be able to mature some other aspects of our business that might be a little bit more loose and or came in through an acquisition that wasn't governed by kind of an organization of the scale of ours, so. So you're a very progressive leader, and before the cameras were rolling, we were talking a little bit about how there is this, this mentality, particularly in IT, the sort of break it, fix it, mentality and, and keeping going that way. How, what's your best advice for people in roles in IT and, and elsewhere in the organization to, to, to get out of that mindset? Well, the, quick, the, the most important thing I think is that you have to move out of an order taker role and you really have to kind of move into either a strategic advisor, kind of an internal consultancy model where in which your IT leadership team is not necessarily seeking a seat at the table, that's kind of a cliche in that regard, but much more of how do you partner with the general managers, segment presidents, and so on and so forth, as an advisor on the side, working with them on how they consume the technology services across the organization. That's really how we focused our architecture team, as opposed to necessarily looking at uh, bringing in an external consultancy to kind of lead and broker that conversation inside the organization. What are you doing with ServiceNow? Let's so we are actually, we've just released uh, in April our first phase with ServiceNow. It was a significant transition over multiple service management platforms. We've rolled out uh, service management and, and knowledge 
uh, already. We're on, uh, underway with uh, operations management next. And we're talking about all the aspects of it. So we're taking very much an out of the box approach. We're not doing any customizations. We're doing a lot more configuration around workflow and so on. We've been able to establish a really strong leadership presence around the organization from a governance perspective, how we're going to float those changes into the organization, and then ultimately, how are we going to deliver, we kind of take it as kind of the base fractal as the first phase and first implementation, and then how do you expand upon that to be able to ultimately make sure that it's woven into the fabric in the organization as a tool for uh, not only employee experience, but customer experience as well. So no, no custom mods, no check. custom mods. Smart. Um, how about a single CMDB with a siloed or a fragmented fractured data That's very data much model. part of our strategy. So, okay, so, so, yeah, so we look into at, that. We look at asset management as kind of the, the, uh, the bridge between logical enterprise architecture models and how it actually translates into physical infrastructure. The CMDB is that source of truth for that. And we're looking to service now to be able to provide that for our organization. And that includes not only in our on-prem instances, our virtualized environments, our hybrid cloud environments, ultimately looking at them as kind of a cloud management provider as we scale up and, and take advantage of that. And that includes chargeback, showback, being able to show what consumption is, being able to have our capacity teams be able to do forecasts based on you know, uh, cyclical environments where, you know, or storms or things like that that move across and affect where our uh, compute resources are ultimately deployed. But you don't get there overnight. I mean, no. that's a, you got organizational barriers, you got you know, politics involved. What's the r timeline look like to affect that? We started that? Our, our, our transformation journey in late 2015. Uh, we reorganized the initial aspects of our IT organization, everything but product development in 2016, and really spent the next 18 months kind of uh, driving towards uh, table setting on a platform level, not only in uh, how we were dealing with service management, but how our cloud native platform was being built out, our CI CD tools, data center consolidation, all those activities. And then ultimately, when in 2017, we reorganized the last elements of our product engineering and our uh, development organization, and now really kind of lit a fuse, if you will, on that transformation journey. So rather than necessarily have it start at one point and look at kind of the distance between strategic kind of uh, alignment, we've actually gone and put definite milestones and breakpoints for us to be able to kind of re-energize that part of the organization. Right. So. Thomas, thanks so much for coming on theCUBE. It's been really fun talking to you. Thanks for the opportunity. Right. Appreciate having you. I'm Rebecca Knight for Dave Vellante. We will have more from ServiceNow Knowledge 18 in a little bit.